During this season of Epiphany, we light the Christ candle. Listen to these words of the Apostle John about Jesus. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Jesus Christ is our light and our life. In his name and in his power, let us worship God. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. They will say of the Lord, God is my refuge and fortress, the one in whom we trust. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the refuge of God's wings. They will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Those who love me, I will deliver, says the Lord. O Lord, we call to you now. Show us your salvation. Welcome to Creston Church. My name is Anna Signor. I am the youth director here. We have been praying for this time and this place and your individual places that all those who gather here will have an encounter with God. The good news for us this morning is that the living God is here and he is with you in your space. And he greets all of us with these words. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the fullness of the spirit, which is before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead and the ruler of the rulers of this earth. And all God's people say together, Amen. And as God has greeted each of us in our own spaces, go ahead and greet each other in your individual spaces as I greet you from my space to yours. And then let's pray together. God of wisdom, you are our guide. You show us the best way to go. You taught your people how to live when you gave us the law and when you gave us Jesus. You made us and you love us and you know what will make us happy. Please help us to live the way you have taught us to live and to pray as you've taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the glory, and the power, forever. Amen. that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart be, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his uncomparably great power for us who believe.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord, you are the giver of life and the God of love. You made each person in your image, and you tell us in your word to love each other as you have loved us. Yet, as we think over this past week, we know we have failed to follow that command. Forgive us, Lord, when instead of loving all people, we choose to love only those who are like us and are easy to love. Forgive us when we turn away from people who look different or think differently. We confess that we cannot love as you have commanded us to on our own. You tell us that love lays down its life for others, and you showed us that on the cross. But we are weak and selfish. We cannot even lay down our preferences and rights for others, let alone our lives. Teach us, Lord. Though we are weak, you are strong. Fill us with your love and compassion for all people so we have eyes to see those around us in need of love. Give us hands and feet willing to reach out. Stir us to invite others to use their gifts for your glory as you have loved us. Help us to love others. Amen. Please join me in the assurance of pardon from Psalm 91. God delivers us and protects us. Praise be to God. God saves us in times of trouble. Thanks be to God. God satisfies us with the gift of our salvation. Glory be to God. Sisters and brothers, through Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Morning, Crescent Church. We now continue in our worship time with our offering. As we've been reminded again of God's grace toward us, our best response is to offer our whole lives back to God. Offering money is just one important part of that. Our special offering this morning is for CORE, Congregations Organizing for Racial Reconciliation. The local ministry that enacts a vision to empower and equip churches and other Christian organizations in West Michigan to organize and disciple their members and constituents 
to become agents of institutional and individual racial reconciliation. Gifts that aren't designated for the special offering will go towards the ministries of our church and our denomination, what God has called us to do as a church here in this neighborhood and city, and what God has called us to do as a denomination around the world. May God bless you as you give. As always, we encourage you to read the Friday email that comes from the church office each week um, to learn important things going on in our congregation. Today I want to highlight um, some plans that are coming together to observe Ash Wednesday. As we prepare for Lent, uh, we'll be observing Ash Wednesday, which is the start of, of Lent, um, and will take place on February 18th. We'll be doing that differently this year because of the circumstances that we all find ourselves in. Um, there will be a couple of options based on your comfort level. You can sign up to gather in person with a small group around an outdoor fire pit at someone's home, or you can sign up to attend a virtual gathering. Um, we'll be providing a short liturgy for all ages to facilitate the gathering, and we're looking for hosts to have that have indoor fireplaces for virtual gatherings or outdoor fire pits for small group gatherings. Again, you can read more in the weekly email to sign up for that. And now I want to share a prayer request that came in this week. Um, we are praying for Dave Van Dyke's mom, Marge Van Dyke, who is 91 years old. She got sick last weekend and tested positive for the COVID virus late um, in that weekend. And she was admitted to St. Mary's Hospital after a night of medications. The fever was gone, but she was still struggling to breathe. Um, no visitors have been allowed. Um, hopefully they will be able to connect by phone this week. Um, since then, we've gotten some updates that um, her lungs have cleared, um, but she is still hospitalized. Um, so there is, there are signs of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now I will be leading us in our prayers of the people. Will you join me in praying? Holy God, we come before you today with our hearts together in worship, though our bodies are apart from one another. We know that you are a just and merciful God who listens to the cries of your people and responds with love, compassion, and liberation. The people in this world you created are suffering, God, because of the many impacts of the coronavirus. So many in the world have lost loved ones, and we have not been able to grieve those losses in the ways we are accustomed to, surrounded by community, wiping away one another's tears and embracing one another. God, give comfort to those who mourn. We have been separate from loved ones who are ill and those who are aging, unable to come alongside and hold the frail hands of those who gave us life and guided us in our faith. We lift up especially Marge Van Dyke and for her family, whom we so dearly love, Dave and Lisa, Kristen, Annie, Karen, Elisa, Joel, and their families. May they all know your presence in this time of uncertainty. We thank you for signs of hope and healing in these last few days. This time of isolation has been especially challenging for our mental health. We thank you, God, for the provision of care for those who are experiencing anxiety, depression, and hopelessness. We thank you, God, for the availability of Pine Rest's Church Assistance Program, providing free counseling to members of our community. We pray, God, that your presence would be felt by each of us as we struggle. Give us courage to ask for help when we need it, so that we do not bear these burdens alone. Be with those who are making calculations and preparations for the distribution of the vaccines. We pray that these efforts would continue swiftly to protect the most vulnerable in our society and bring safety to us all so that we can someday soon return to the activities of gathering that give us life and hope. Sometimes, God, it seems that all we can do is worry. Worry about us or those we love contracting the coronavirus. Worry about the long-term impacts of the isolation and the shutdowns. Worry about the future of our church community but you invite us to cast all our cares upon you. May we find comfort, God, in speaking those concerns and worries 
and may your spirit renew us with hope for a future that is filled with restoration and renewal. God, we live in a time of deep division in the church, in our institutions, in our nation. God, give us the humility to hear one another's fears and hopes, to recognize your image even in those we disagree with the most. Make way for restoration, justice, and accountability for the harm that has led to disunity and for the harm that continues because of those divisions. We thank you, God, for the ministry of the Colossian Way that has provided opportunities for members of our congregation to learn skills for difficult conversations. We thank you, especially God, for Joel Lawrence and Michelle Hesslinga, who facilitated that group. We pray for additional opportunities for learning and deepening. We pray to God for the work of our search committee as they have conducted another round of interviews and are discerning um, the next steps forward. We pray your guidance in that process that you would provide a leader or leaders for our congregation in this time of transition. We pray your place, your spirit's hand in that work. We thank you too, God, for the ministry of CORE. We pray that you bless their efforts with our church and with others around West Michigan to name and repent of the sins of racism. Be with the work of the Creston Anti-Racism Team as they guide our congregation in this vital work. Work your sanctifying power on us as we seek a new identity in you, both as individuals and collectively as a covenant people. God, we thank you for the many lives who have intersected with the life of our church over the years through our worship gatherings and our various ministries. And today, we thank you especially for the Najoni House, through which our community got to know Emily College. Thank you for bringing her with us uh, to be with us today and to bring your word. We pray that you would bless us and bless and bless her as she preaches. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Our children have the opportunity each week to join in their own video or audio version of the children's worship time. Let's share this blessing from God with our children and with each other. The Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. Hello, beloved Creston Church family. My name is Emily, and I am so happy to be a part of this service today. It was an honor and a privilege to serve a few years back as the Najoni House mentor, just a couple doors down from the church. And I did that from 2014 to 2017, and I got to be a part of this beautiful church family during that time. It was a really special time for me and I really miss those days on Buffalo Avenue. And it has been really special for me to hear from some of you through emails and phone calls and text messages and cards. I thank you so much for that and for your prayers. And I encourage you to keep in touch too. I love hearing from you. So thanks for staying connected when you have time and capacity. Shortly after that time on Buffalo Avenue, I went to Ohio to spend some much needed time with family. And then I was able to come out to Southern California where I am now. And I'm sending you lots of warmth and sunshine. Um, and during that time, this time in Southern California, I was able to complete my Master of Divinity, my MDiv at Fuller Seminary this past summer. Praise God, praise God for that. Thanks for praying me through that time as well. And right now I'm just praying and discerning next steps, whether that be in a church or back on a college campus. And I'm also continuing my chaplaincy certification process. Along with being out here these past couple years, I also met a very special person named Theo. He usually goes by Ted Perlman and we were married last fall. Can you believe it? I can't either, but um, his name Theodore means gift of God, and that is what he is to me, and I am truly thankful for him. He is a Jesus-loving Jewish prayer warrior man, 
He's also a well-known and respected award-winning guitar player and music producer. So we have a lot of fun on this adventure that we get to share together. And one of our mottos as a couple is only God, only God. And we remind each other of that quite often in our relationship. And we've reminded each other of that a lot this past year, only God. And so as I think about our passage this morning from Psalm 91, I am reminded of that, only God. Before we read this passage today, I want us just to take a moment to pause and to breathe and then we'll pray. So pause and I invite you to breathe with me. Hear our prayer, God. Oh, most high, thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, Thank you for your presence to help us receive this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from Psalm 91, 1 through 10. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I imagine a young woman in one of the tribes of Israel with her family, wandering through the wilderness with dreams of her own for the future, frustrated maybe with the current situation, tired from the journey, irritated with walking for days and days, and her mother gently reminds her, my child, this is not God's punishment. This is God's protection. The young girl is not quite convinced, but is listening and watching. And later that night around the fire, she hears the singing of her people. Can you hear it too? The Lord is our refuge, our fortress, Shaddai in whom we trust. And she thinks to herself, we are out here in this wilderness. There's no place to call refuge. There's no fortress anywhere. And we don't even have a place to dwell. And the song continues, Elohim will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. The Most High is our dwelling. Even to this day, the song continues. A mighty fortress is our God. Great is thy faithfulness. These songs, these psalms, they're passed along to remember, to proclaim, to protest, to lament, to praise, to rejoice, to grieve, and to hope. This is Israel's hymnal. The Lord is faithful and trustworthy. 
Sing it out. Can we sing it out? Psalm 91, this is a song of trust, a trust in God's faithfulness. And it is possibly even written by Moses himself, a great leader of the people of Israel who were in need of refuge and a place to dwell. And the psalmist proclaims, the Lord is our refuge, our dwelling place, and has been our dwelling place throughout these generations. And this kind of refuge, it's not necessarily a typical destination. Our refuge is here. No, the Lord is the destination. The Lord is the destination. The Lord is refuge. The Most High God, this Most High God will commune together with the people providing shelter and rest, humans joining together with the Most High God. There's an invitation to dwell with this God wherever we are, especially in the midst of chaos. And this Psalm honestly, honestly depicts the fears, the terrors, the plagues, and the evil that threatens and surrounds and comes after people day and night, night and day, things that can be seen and cannot be seen. And it reminds me of this past year. It's been very real for us this past year. What will it be that shields us and protects us? I wanna echo what the psalmist echoes, the Lord's faithfulness. The psalm sings out faithfulness. The faithfulness of God will be our shield. The enduring, everlasting, empowering faithfulness of God. This text also says, you will not fear. It's not like, I hope you don't fear. Maybe you shouldn't fear. You will not fear. God's faithfulness allows for our fearlessness. God's faithfulness allows for our fearlessness. And I don't know about y'all, but I have had plenty of fear and fears this past year. And as I read passages like Psalm 91, sometimes I'm wrestling through and crying out for God's faithfulness. Where is God's faithfulness? And then I'm reminded or I see the Crescent Church family who week by week is showing up for each other and committed to something higher than themselves. Y'all have done that week by week and you show me God's faithfulness. Then I see it. That's God's faithfulness. And this psalmist makes these bold proclamations of trust maybe from past experience, maybe from memories. And it's for then and for us now, the Lord, refuge, the most high, a dwelling place. The text also goes on to say, no harm will overtake you. It does not say that bad things are not gonna happen, y'all. Things are happening all around here in this world and in this song. And I know that it's been a hard year and it's maybe been harder and darker for some of us than others, but nonetheless hard. No harm will overtake us. I'm thinking of pandemics and plagues and financial problems and health issues, climate crisis, losses, doubts, stress, worries, wars, famines, racism, sexism, classism, patriarchy, and all the powers of hell will not overtake us. And I hear 1 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This God, the Lord, Shaddai, Elohim, 
is refuge, is faithful, is a fortress. And what kind of covering and fortress and faithfulness will this be? Feathers and wings. It is such tender imagery, the protective wings of God. It's a holy covering. No matter where we are, physically, emotionally, spiritually, the abiding protection of the Almighty God is essential for dealing with dark times. And under this covering, it may seem like we're in darkness, deep darkness. I'm, I'm thinking of a mother holding her child close to her, covered maybe by a blanket. And I think of that child underneath that blanket in the dark and yet so close to nourishment and love and safety. And I think about us under God's wings in the same way, maybe pretty dark under there, but so close to the nourishing and safe love of God. It's such a compassionate, tender image of God. One person who came to find refuge under God's wings was a woman named Ruth. And in the book of Ruth, in the Old Testament, in chapter two, it says, May you be richly rewarded by the Lord Jehovah, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Ruth, with so much loss in her life, and considered an outsider because she's not from the tribes of Israel, makes the Most High her dwelling, the God of Israel her God. And maybe she even sang about it through the years, through the losses, the lessons. The Lord is my refuge. I wonder if her great-grandson, David, ever heard her singing. King David, who would go on to compose many of the Psalms we know. What songs do we have to sing and to share and to pass on in the midst of it all, throughout this journey, in times of wilderness, wandering and wondering? The refrain resounds. Can we sing along? The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. This fortress is one of faithfulness, my God in whom I trust. I want to invite you today to consider or reconsider trusting in this God. This God is not only faithful and trustworthy, this God saves. Surely I will save you, the text says. And sometimes I do have questions or wonder about the losses and the death and wonder about God saving us. And then I'm reminded that this God, so faithful and full of compassion, became flesh and dwelt among us in Jesus Christ, the profound and ultimate dwelling among us through which God saves. This God, this God is where you may find refuge and covering. Amen. To be reminded of this, y'all, and to testify to this great faithfulness, we have an opportunity to sing, to sing together. We can look to Israel's hymnal, and our songs join with those from long ago, our voices in a choir with those voices. And you know what? It's okay if you don't feel like singing along right now. Give yourself permission to just sit and listen. Let's sing. Amen.
Y'all, it has been so special to be a part of this with y'all today. Thank you so much. And here is a closing prayer for us as we head out into our day and into our week. Lord, most high, almighty God, thank you that we can find refuge under your wings. Thank you that we are shielded by your faithfulness. In these times that we are experiencing, may your compassion and faithfulness provide courage, comfort, and calm that we need for this day and this week. May we be reminded that we may be nestled to you nearer than we think, even in our darkest times. Help us to find the songs to sing in our hearts and lives, to pass along and proclaim your great faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Go in peace and in God's faithfulness.